Hey guys, so let's talk about quadratic equations. In the last episode, we saw examples of these types of equations, which followed the format of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Now in order to solve these, we need to find the roots. Now to find the roots of these types of problems, we just need to find the factors, and then set everything equal to zero. So to find the factors of something like this, we kind of went over it in the last episode, we look at the coefficient of the x squared term, and we look at the last number here that doesn't have a variable, and we know that the coefficients of x, or the coefficient of x is 1, so 1, 1, and we need to find the factors of 12, which are 1, 12, 3, 4, and 2, and 6. So the next step is to cross multiply. Here we get 12 and 1, and to take a look at these results, and see if there's any way to manipulate them by adding or subtracting and adding a negative or a positive sign to get the middle term's coefficient. I don't think there's any way to manipulate 12 and 1 to get 7, so we need to move on. Next up we have 3 and 4, so we cross multiply 1 and 4 and 1 and 3, and we get 4 and 3. And it's obvious that 4 plus 3 equals 7, so we know that we can factor this out to x plus 4 and x plus 3. And now to get the roots, we just need to see what value of x here would make this equal to 0, because 0 times whatever this is will get us 0, and then vice versa, see what we could substitute here for x to get make this 0, so that this times this will get us 0. So here it's just negative 4, and here it's negative 3 and those are the roots. So knowing this all, we can apply the same concepts to this next question. Here we know the coefficient is 1, so we have 1 and 1, and here we know this is negative 12, so we know that whatever we have to multiply, or I'm sorry, whatever we get will have to have a negative, no, uh, negative sign in front of it. So 1 times 3, 4 times 1 is 4 and 3, and here we have a negative 4. Is there any way to manipulate 4 and 3 to get negative 4? I don't think there is. So moving on, we have 1 and 1, 2 and 6. We get 2 and 6 again. Now if we make negative, if we make this a negative 6 and add it to 2, we'll get negative 4. And 2 times negative 6 will get us negative 12. So we know that the factors are x plus 2 and x minus 6, and to make these zeros, we need a negative 2 and a positive 6, and these are the roots. Now another way to solve quadratic equations is by using the quadratic formula. This won't be given to you on the test, so this is something you're going to have to memorize. It's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all under the root, all divided by 2a. So applying this to this question, here we know that a is 1, a is always in front of the x squared term, b here is 7, and c is 12. So taking these values for a, b, and c, we can plug them into the quadratic equation. Knowing b is 7, this will be negative 7, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 7 squared, which is 49, minus 4ac, 4 times a is, one, uh, is 4, times c, which is 12, is 48, all divided by 2 times a, which is 1, so we get 2. Now all we need to do is simplify this out. We get negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 1, which is 1, over 2, which equals negative 7 plus 1 over 2, and negative 7 minus 1 over 2. This top one gets us negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4. This bottom one gets us negative 6 over 2, which gets us negative 3. And negative 4 and negative 3 would be the roots. So sometimes you'll see two equations with two variables, and you'll be asked to solve for one of those variables, or maybe both. So for instance, we have x plus 9y equals 3, and negative x minus 4y is equal to 17, solve for x. 
So I find the simplest way to solve for these types of uh, system of equations to put them on top of each other. Next up, take a look and see that what we can do is sum these equations together. So x minus x is 0. 9y, since this is a positive and negative, it'll be a negative. So 9y minus 4y is 5y. 3 plus 17 is 20. y equals 4. And now to solve for x, we just need to replug the 4 into either of these equations for y. So let's take the first one, x plus 9 times 4 for y equals 3. x plus 9 times 4 is 36 equals 3. Now minus 36 on both sides, and we get negative 33. So x is negative 33. So solving these types of problems won't always be as straightforward. So for instance, here we have x plus 9y equals 3, and x plus 4y equals negative 17, and we're asked to solve for x. So again, stack the equations up. Now in this case, we can't just add through, because this will get us 2x and 36, or, and 13y, and we'll still have two variables. We need to eliminate one of them somehow. So here, we can subtract through. So that'll give us x minus x, which will get rid of the x and leave us with a y term. So let's go through with this. x minus x is 0. 9y minus 4y, because this kind of is like a parenthesis, gets us 5y. Negative and a negative gets us a positive, so it'll leave us with 3 and 17, which adds up to 20. And we know y is equal to 4. And like in the previous example, all we need to do is take this and substitute it into one of these original equations. So we have x plus 9y, 9 times 4, equals 3. x plus, 13, or plus 36 is equal to 3. And x is equal to negative 33. So next up, we have 2x plus y is equal to 4, and x plus 2y is equal to 5. Solve for x. So what we need to do first is stack them up. And now here, we can't just subtract through or add through, because we'll just get 3, 3x and 3y, or x and negative y. We'll still be left with two variables. So in this case, we need to multiply through by a coefficient. So Let's say we want to eliminate x first. What we need to do is multiply this entire bottom equation through by 2 so that we can then subtract and get rid of 2x minus 2x and be left with just y. So multiplying 2 through this bottom equation gets us 2 times x, 2 times 2y, which is 4y, and 2 times 5, which is 10. Now take the original equation and stack that on top. Next, we need to subtract through so we can get rid of the x terms. So 2x minus 2x is 0. This gets us negative 4y. So y minus 4y is minus 3y. And that's equal to 4 minus 10, which is negative 6. Now we divide both sides by negative 3, and we get y equals 2. Now to solve for x, we just need to take the y equals 2 and plug that into one of the original equations. So 2x plus 2 equals 4. 2x is equal to 2, and x is equal to 1. And that's the answer. So moving on to inequalities. You can solve these the same way that we've solved the previous equations that we went over. All you have is a greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to sign instead of an equal sign. So for this case, 3x plus 9 is greater than 18. All we need to do is isolate the variable. So we have 3x, subtract 9 from both sides. 3x is greater than 9, and then divide both sides by 3. And we get x is greater than 3. So the only catch when dealing with these types of uh, problems 
is when you divide or multiply both sides by a negative number, you need to flip the sign. So if it's a greater than sign, you need to make it a less than or vice versa. So for example, here we have negative 3x plus 9 is greater than 18. Isolate the variable like we did in the last problem. So we subtract 9 from both sides. And now to isolate the x, we need to divide by negative 3 which means that we need to flip the sign. So we get x is less than negative 3. So sometimes you'll encounter inequalities that are on both sides of an expression. So for example, we have 9 is less than 3x plus 9, which is less than 18. All you need to do to solve for this is to break it down into two inequalities. We have 9 is less than 3x plus 9, and then look at another one saying 3x plus 9 is less than 18. So let's take the first part, 9 is less than 3x plus 9, isolate the variable, so we need to subtract 9 from both sides, and we get x is greater than 0. Now we need to do the other expression here, 3x plus 9 is less than 18, isolate the variable again, so we subtract 9 from both sides and then divide by 3 on both sides, and you get x is less than 3. So putting that together, we get 0 is less than x, which is less than 3. All right, so that's the end of this video. Here are some questions for you to review if you want to go over more systems of equations and inequalities. And like always, feel free to leave questions and comments below, and give the video a like and subscribe if you found it helpful.